I have I have classes every Sunday at my home in in White in Tigers. I almost said Whitehorse. <laughs> <laughs> and these are my students here. Pretty soon they're going to prof be professors, I think. <laughs> yeah. When I was going to school myself. I went to mission school, and I wasn't allowed to speak the language, too. But we were lucky. My father, he used to always tell us, we came home on Saturdays from 1 to 6. And uh, he used to talk to us all the time. He said, you got to not forget that you, you, who you are. you got to remember your language and your culture, he said. No matter what they tell you, he said. I had a sister that was 10 years older than me and my cousin who was six years older than me. As soon as they came up to me, the first thing out of their mouth was, don't talk Indian. I must have been a chatterbox, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke three languages when I went in. I talked Denke, that's a Tigers language. If you could speak Denke, you could speak to everybody around in the Yukon. It's just a little bit different. You go to Asiac and they just got a little bit different and down into um, Carmax and, and uh, Ross River. That's where the people used to trade like that. That's why it was different. And I was, allowed, I was called to a meeting in, in um, um, you know, where they had that big fire last year? What they call it now? Um, Montana? Oh, no. Oh. Dasa? Fort McMurray? Where? You, yesterday you told me it was Fort McMurray? Yeah. Fort, Fort McMurray? Huh? Fort McMurray? What is it in that town? Big, big, big fire down there anyways. And uh, I met this man and he was talking Denke. How oh, you know that language, I told him, and he said, we followed the caribou down here, he said, during the ice age. My grandma said, five winters ago, five grandmas ago, she said, and it would have been six with her. She said, people were starving up here, she said, and some went that way and some went this way. Uncle Johnny, he was a big game outfitter and he went to, to uh, Fort St. John and, and to get some feed and here, um, there was two guys standing on the road. And uh, he picked up a load of feed, and he said it took about two hours to load it up. Then he came up by the gas station. Those two guys were still standing on the road, and he went to eat some lunch. And then, and then he came back, and they were still on the road yet. And he went little ways, and he stopped, and he, he, tell them, he called them guys, and he said, where are you going? And they said, they're going to go to 101. He said, well, I'm not going to go down into the village, but he said, I can drop you off at the, at the gas station. And they said, that was good. And Uncle Johnny, he thought to himself, well, because um, I was, uh, went for uh, breakfast and everything, he said, and these poor people must be hungry. And he said, we were always taught to feed our guests as soon as they came to visit us. And... Uh, he told that young boy, if you lift up your legs, he said, there's a box there, he said, and I got sandwich meat and bread and drinks in there, he said. You guys must be hungry, he said. Help yourself, he told them. And that old man, he, he turned around to that young guy and he spoke in Denke to him. He sure is a kind old gentleman. And Uncle Johnny answered him in the language and he said, we were taught to be always kind to people, he said. That's why he said, I want to give you a sandwich. And they were so surprised. That, and then I met this guy from um, in, in, um, in Alberta, and he could talk Denke too. I said, how did you learn the language? And I recognized some of the words. And he said, we followed the caribou down here. He said, that's how we, that's how we remember our language, he said. Not many of us left now that came down this way, he said, but I was just a little boy when, when we came down, he said. So isn't it wonderful? Everybody said the Turkish language is gone, the Denke language is gone, but it's not. 
the Labarge people can talk the language really good. And uh, only remember a few things in the Denke, and one of the things that my brother used to say to us was, was uh, hurry up, hurry, hurry, he always tell us. And that's the only thing I remember, because he used to holler at us. I don't know where he was taking us to, but that's what he, would, he always said to us. <laughs> so we're going to sing a song, grandma song, we call it. She used to sing that song all the time to us. And uh, I'm, I'm, I hope it doesn't die out. And uh, with your machine, it'll live forever, I guess. So, and these are my students. I'm so proud of them. They can even beat me in singing now, I think. <laughs> oh, look. He go off one, just a kitty one. <laughs> you all ready? Okay. The key on how do she again your cow da? Tawa kuge. Hasehan hagen yahuna. You can ace, you can ace, you the gun hosity. Achlus a ye to our ooze. Achotini to dark a show see out. Ya eat that talk to talk so let's see, just a kitty one. Yeah. Yeah. Ach is ach is ach twice go ach is in in kochenigi yat ko un ach awe ach lis John tagis John ye do us up awe yat ke u good ach is do do lis do a do do is ka de ta in hat u a good ka ach his young sister. It's been 70 years since um, my dad left. He left in 1970. I guess it's about 70 now. And how in which a clock you Eight of us, only four grew up dog owner two brothers and one sister. And the talk of it as a cat has who art. A fleet away and Mariah John did a sock and a away to say after our tea. Park and she and the Usla. The Usla of it as a sock and her. Had for us the Usla and she. A gawe, you a eight carder had do a ho. A seek in a way, the ooze in order with two art. A owe, they wanted us to talk um, language. They invited uh, Mary Anderson from Atlan and me from Carcass so that we could uh, join them in their workshop. That must have been about 15 years ago, I guess, to get an honor at Hua Good Akwa. Chalk or day away, we actually gink a ha a hunt of good. You talk funny, you hot dog. After it's quite a dainty getaway, you a hot tank. Anyways, um, we went down to that place to uh, to help them with their language, and I guess they wanted to hear us saying "masa" and "yasa" and you know all that. I didn't even know it was different. I thought I was talking good Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I'm sorry I break into English sometimes, but I, I just can't help it. 
I wanted you to tell you the story about my father. Yag hat has u et ach ischa du tla and du sendi. But he was just uh, about four years old when uh, when um, he was adopted by his father's brother. And uh, anyway, um, his real father had other other kids, and one of them was Uncle Frank and and Uncle Henry and Auntie Alice, and and uh, and they were, they were all half brothers and sisters. Whole bunch of them, and Lena, Lena Smith. Uh, she got married to Glade Ka, I think, and uh, and uh, and uh, and a fox. I'm related to everybody in Teslin, I think. My dad used to tell us, "You gotta know who you who you're gonna marry." He said, "You're related to everybody." He tell us. <laughs> uh, so we were lucky. Both of my sister, uh, my sister married Letkashu, and me, I married uh, Letka. That's my second marriage. My first one ran away. Let you know, what would you hear? A sick in his dark on sick away after you would take a click. One son. My son was um, five years, no, ten years old when that happened. A two to wear a tech hook oozy with a hoot. I wait a one day when I was really feeling bad, I must have been looking really bad, and and um, we were living not very far from Jameson's. And at recess time, my son came home and he said, "What are you doing home?" I tell him, "Mama, you didn't look very good when I went to school this morning. I wanted to see how you were." He said, "You know, I was really thinking bad thoughts when he left." And I guess it showed. And then a couple of days after, my mom came to visit, and uh, and uh, I was out in the back, and I was hiding from everybody, and I was really crying my head off. And um, my mom came, and she sat beside me. She put her arms around me, and she cried hard with me. And then she said, "You know, you're really crazy." She said, "Only when you feel like that is when somebody's dead and gone." She said, "That person you're crying for like that is still alive. He's walking around having a good time, and look at you." She said, "What's the matter with you anyway?" She told me. <laughs> I really needed that pep talk. Now I'm a counselor at the big house, you know, and I talk to some of the boys up there. And boy, they really feel bad sometimes. They worry about their girlfriends and their wives. I tell them, you know something I found out when I was really young? You don't die from a broken heart. I know that because you're going to get better someday. <laughs> so that's one of the things that he was just saying that, you know, some people have all kinds of things. In four months, I'm going to be 90 years old. And uh, in all that time, I went through hell sometimes, but but I made it. I lost all my brothers and my sister and my mother and dad. And uh, I'm still kicking yet, <laughs> but I need lots of help sometimes. My kids brought me about four walking sticks. I got two wheelchairs, one a motorized one, and two walkers. And uh, my husband told me, he bought that motorized wheelchair, and he told me, how come you don't use that? I tell him, well, I don't really need to use it when you, you're there to hold me up, I tell him. <laughs> I used it once after he bought it. I went up to visit my cousin. She lives about half a block from me. I tipped almost tip over twice. And I came back and I told him, you're going to get rid of me faster if I use that. 
<laughs> it's built for streets and pavement, eh? Not for rocking uh, roads. <laughs> Anyways, um, I could go on and on and tell you about my life, but I'm not. I want to tell you my dad's story. <clears throat> my dad came up the river from um, from with his new father, and uh, he wasn't very old, and his sister. And his sister died up here in that uh, old Teslin town. She's buried there. And before Rosie Smith, or uh, Rosie um, uh, Johnson died, she told me, you should go there, she said. She said, that, that, that stone headstone fell in, she said. And she said, and we, we set it up, she said. It'll never fall again, she told me. You should go there to see it. And I've always wanted to go there, but I, I never did get there. Maybe this summer, I hope. My husband bought a great big boat, and we only went um, up the head of the lake in Tychus and then home again. That's only one time. But my uh, daughter, we took my daughter with, her, with us, and we went up to that old camp up there, and there were some guys there, and uh, and uh, they ran out of cigarettes. I don't know how long they were there. And uh, my husband turned to my daughter, Nancy, and he told her, you better give her, them guys your, some cigarettes, she said. And he, she started to take cigarettes out of her package, and he said, give him the whole package, she said. And then we broke down, not very far from there. And she never had no cigarettes all that night and the next day. <laughs> you make me give up my cigarettes, she told him. <laughs> Anyway, um, that's just getting ahead of and telling you my own story again. <laughs> my dad's sister died, and she was buried there in Johnson Town, they call it. And uh, and his sis, his young sister, his real sister, she was pregnant when she got married. His mother got married again to his her first husband's uh, brother or cousin, I guess it is. Anyways, <clears throat> anyways, a long time ago, they used to, sometimes they have two wives, three wives, and even four wives, I guess. But um, anyway, her auntie didn't like it, so she took her away from them, and, and she got, she said, we got lots of young men around here, you don't have to have, you don't have to be a second wife, she told her. So she took her away, that was Grandpa Ed. And he was, uh, he was a really good grandpa. When I hear Lance talking, I just about fall over when I first heard him because he sounded just like my grandpa. And it was wonderful. And they were related anyhow. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and uh, anyways, uh, uh, my, my um, ach art, Oh no, you are your dad Johnson. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah. Ah, that oh, um, you uh, clown that your husband Ed, and uh, Grandpa was working there, and he, and uh, you know, young kids are always curious about everything all the time, and Dad used to go to work with him, and uh, and here the boss up there told him. I need to take some things up to that mine up there, up on the hill. And um, said, maybe you could take a trip and I'm going to pay you for it, she said. So every day, Dad used to go to work with Grandpa and, and uh, he'd take a trip up there, shovels and stuff like anything up there. They gave him a dollar a trip and they pay him every day. When he come home, he give that money to his mother. And when she had enough, she bought 22 shells. They had some kind of 22 that time. And she gave him 10 shells, and she tell him, you bring back 10 things, and don't shoot it away for nothing, she tell him. And uh, when he came home with the 10 things, she used to skin it and clean it. It didn't matter what it was. It was gophers and rabbits and grouse and even squirrels, maybe. And then his mother used to clean it really good and then take it down to the Chinese shop. The people in 
And um, Dawson didn't know what they were eating, I guess. <laughs> and she, his mother sell it at the to Chinese shop. Every day they did that. And, and all that money had just piled up like that. And when they had enough, a year after, after she died, uh, before the year was up, they went to, to Juno and they bought a headstone and a um, whole bunch of blankets to load. They even had an extra boat to load that stuff up. And they had a big potlatch up there in Johnson Town. And the chief, the Yen Yedi chief, was so astonished at those, how they worked so hard, my dad and his mother. They even paid um, Grandpa Ed because he was the one that took them down to Juno and back up with all the stuff. And after the potlatch, she told him, He was born as Dr. Wedi. And uh, I thought you guys should know, you know, because sometimes when I was up here and they call out that the different clans to dance, I used to go up and dance for the Yen Yedis. And one of my cousins, he's way older than me, he took me aside one day and he really gave me a big lecture about, what do you think you're doing, you know? I know who you are, he said. Your, your dad was a duck lady, he said. What are you doing dancing around for Yen Yedis, he said. But that head, that head chief, he, he he adopted him to the Yen Yedi clan. That's why I danced for them all the time. But I know, I know Uncle Frank and, and Auntie Alice and, and all of them, you know, who they were and stuff like that. And uh, I felt so bad that I thought maybe some of you should know. I'm sorry I just turned around and start speaking in Lincoln, but I have been a teacher in, uh, for diabetes for a long time. And uh, I can't help when I'm teaching, I go back into English again. Although I, broke, I speak broken Tlingit now, I think, because that little boy in, in, in um, Dog Point used to tell me I talk funny. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my story. But uh, I know one thing, no matter how much problems you have, you never die from a broken heart. Kuni asks if you would sing a song. For, that your dog, your dad made for Jake, waiting yeah. for him to come. Oh yeah, the one you sang yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Where is she? Miss Cheese. We go walk to you, Shinaski. This uh, song we were supposed to visit Uncle Jake and his family. My dad was really, really good friends with uh, with Auntie Mary's um, husband. And uh, <clears throat> you all know Jake Jackson. And uh, we were supposed to come to visit one Christmas, and we didn't make it. And Uncle Jake made this song for him. And, and uh, he taught, my dad taught us all to sing it. So I sang it yesterday when we were down by the lake. So uh, he asked me to sing it now. OK. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> song from my dad, and um, my dad used to sing it all the time, especially when we come up to Brooks. I guess there's a big mountain there, big short lane they call it. And when they, when we say, for those of you that don't know, Gunnit is that, is that um, northern lights, when it turned red, they say. That's the people that went into the next world, and then that the spirits come back to look at you. And that, that's what Uncle Jake said, did you really turn into a northern lights? And that's what he sang about then. He said, you're going to hear me crying from on top of that mountain. That's much I'm going to cry for you. <coughs> mm. Mm. Ha, 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 ha.